Hello and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a, a very small watch, uh, Gégère Lecoutre, uh, a woman model. So it's, uh, it's difficult to see on the, on the screen, but the scale of this watch is so small. We'll see a bit later, we will have some, some comparison. Uh, I bought this watch on, uh, at an uh, auction site. And uh, yeah, actually it was, it's a gift for, for a family member. I want to, to restore this watch uh, as best as I can. And so, yeah, look at this beautiful movement. To be fair, this is one of the most beautiful movements that I uh, worked on. It's so small. Look at it compared to an Omega. That's a, a chronograph movement, but the size difference is, is, is huge. Yeah? It's, uh, to be fair, it's amazing the engineering that they, they had to do to fit like all the components in such a small uh, case and such a small movement. And yeah, this movement, which I, I like as well, is the finishing. You can see on, uh, on top of the movement, you have like a Côte de Genève, like, which is like this uh, machining stripes that you see on, uh, on the movement. You will have a beautiful anglage, like all the parts have uh, very uh, soft edges. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a very small movement, but yeah, it's very, very, very nice. So I remove the, the hands. So on this model, there is only hour hands and minute hands. No sub-second or, or central second. You can see uh, it's not in bad shape, the, the dial or all the movement either. Um, but actually, when I put it on a time grapher, it, it was very low in amplitude, like around uh, 180 degrees. And uh, yeah, the time loss per day was, was huge. So this, uh, this movement desperately need a, a good service. So I remove the dial. Just screw, screw back the screw dial, just to make sure I don't lose them during the cleaning. And now I start to disassemble the, the mechanism. So the cannon pinion is very small and my version tool is not working. So I had to use this pair of uh, hand lever to lift the cannon pinion. Here it is, it's so small. Like all these parts on, uh, on the watch is, uh, are so small. So I'm uh, releasing the power gently. You can see the balance assembly is with this uh, gold, like very uh, bright gold color. And as well, the finish like uh, on, a, on a crown wheel and a ratchet wheel with like some uh, shiny parts uh, in the center. And uh, like, yeah, you can see like a satin finish on the, on the outside. Yeah, it's, it's amazing the, deta the, the details that you have on this uh, movement. Uh, the, the level is, is crazy. Okay, so I remove the balance assembly first, just to make sure I don't damage it. There we go. And now I'm removing the pallet fork cock and the pallet fork, and you can you will see the pallet fork has a very different shape compared to to other model. Normally it has a T, it's like a, a T shape, and this one is like a like a long bar. It's uh, very different. And the same, like it's, it's, you don't see, like, but the, the, the beautiful on this, the finish, sorry, is beautiful on this, uh, on this palette fork, like with the anglage, uh, with uh, like a black black polish on the top, like it's amazing the size of the parts and the the, the finishing level that you have on uh, on this movement. So the movement you can see is uh, is written like just below the balance assembly. It's a P491. I could not find much information uh, on, on, uh, online. Looks like it's quite an old movement because I saw this movement were in production in, uh, in the 40s. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still like, uh, I already said it a couple of times, but I'm still amazed by the size of this movement. I don't know at the time if it was probably one of the smallest movements that they, they had on the market uh, for a manual, uh, manual watch. But uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So far, I did not see anything wrong on the, on the movement during the disassembly. I check if you had any plays with the main spring barrel assembly. Check the handshake on the, on the train of wheel. Everything looks good. So here I remove the train of wheels. We can see all the wheels. Just checking the pivot if uh, on the wheel, is, if everything is okay. Everything is... Uh, it's looking good so far. The movement is quite clean. You cannot see there is dirt like in the movement, but obviously like it probably was not used for a long time or it was not serviced for a long time. 
So there is always some dried up oil or grease in the movement that prevents it from running accurately. So that's what we are going to do, disassemble everything, clean it, reassemble and oil again, oil it and grease it properly. So now the main, main spring barrel bridge, the center wheel. And here we have the, the main spring assembly that we'll disassemble later. And the last part that I'm releasing is a setting lever uh, screw. Okay, so now we move on to the dial side where we have the keyless work. And uh, yeah, we remove the two little screws which are on the setting lever spring there. And you can see even on this side, everything is, uh, look at the minute wheel, is so small compared to, to a normal movement. And actually that's a, 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 a tip for like, if you want to start to work on this movement, like normally it's advised to, when you start this hobby, like to work on, uh, on pocket watch because the movement is big. So it's easier to work on. Like after obviously you can, you can move on, on wrist watch, but like normal size. And to work actually on these small movements is very, it's like, yeah, it's difficult. He, he, he had some complexity because the parts are so small. It's, it's, it gets a bit trickier to work on this, uh, on this movement. Um, so yeah, actually I advise, even if your wife will be happy because you will, uh, you maybe fix or restore a nice uh, woman watch. But yeah, it's, it's quite tricky. So I will not advise to work on this movement until you are quite confident in your skills, yeah. Okay, so I remove the mainspring and disassemble the, the mainspring barrel assembly. And this is all the parts, like, so it's a standard movement, so it's not a lot of parts, but they are so small compared to, to a normal movement. Uh, so yeah, that looks beautiful. Okay, so now we are putting all the parts in a cleaning machine. So three step process. First, we put it into a cleaning solution. So we increase the motor speed, it will rotate in a cleaning solution. And after we will have two, the, the next two steps will be to rinse basically the cleaning solution to make sure the parts are, are fully clean and there is no solution left. Okay, so if you like the video, please like and subscribe and uh, there will be many more videos to come on my channel. Uh, I like to share uh, my, my passion, so this hobby for watchmaking. I started uh, this hobby like maybe six months ago and I shared all my projects on, uh, on YouTube. So if you like it, subscribe, press the bell icon and uh, yeah, you will get some notification when I put new videos. Okay, so now the, the parts are clean. We are, this uh, last step is to dry, dry the parts to make sure like all the liquid is removed and we can start the reassembly process. Okay, so first I'm going to rewind the mainspring. So I'm reusing the, the mainspring that was in a watch, the original one. And actually that's the first time that I use, I have a, have a, I have a mainspring winder kit and that's the smaller size that I use probably for the mainspring uh, of, from, from the kit, it's so small. Okay, so now the, the mainspring is wind, I need to remove the, the handle that goes through the middle. Okay, so you can see it's a bit tight. Just need to make sure like you keep the spring in place that it doesn't pop out. Okay, put a bit of grease um, in, a, in a mainspring, some uh, 8200. And now I just put uh, the mainspring back, back in the barrel. Okay, let's put the, fit the, the barrel arbor right in the middle. A bit of grease there where, where you have the point which are in contact metal to metal and a bit of grease on the lid to make sure that the mainspring inside will uh, stay properly uh, lubricated. Okay, so we are progressing nicely with uh, the mainspring. Now let's focus on uh, balance assembly. So that was clean. Now what I need to do is I need to oil the jewels. So first I need to remove this spring, which is on the top, which is a different shock spring than uh, what I'm used to. It's a bit more, uh, it's like a kif um, shock spring. So there is some tools there uh, to, when I, when I put it back, I, I put it back with some tools because with the tweezers, it's a bit more difficult to put this, uh, these springs. Okay. I remove the jewels, just clean them. I just, uh, they were, or they went already through the, 
the cleaning process, but just with a bit of Rodico just to make sure I remove any excess if there is still some uh, dried up oil or grease. And now I'm doing a fixo drop treatment on them. So the fixo drop treatment will uh, help the oil that I'm putting right now to sit right in the middle and stay at the right point, not to like move over to the side. Okay, so now it's oiled and clean. I can put it back in the in this place. I do the same on the other side. So on the dial side, disassemble it, uh, treat it in fixer drop, and oil it. And you can see now when I put everything back in place, the balance with a, with a bit of air I'm testing, and you can see it's uh, it's moving freely. So that's good. Okay, so now we can uh, start uh, the, the assembly, the rest of the assembly. Just putting some uh, oil first, some medium viscosity oil there, some 9104. So putting the main spring barrel assembly, the center wheel. Putting a bit of oil there where we're gonna put the screw for the setting lever. There we go. And that's a trick. You always remember like this uh, setting lever screw need to be put before I put uh, the bridge here. Or, uh, that's a, a common mistake when you start. Uh, you always forget to put this uh, this screw and actually the screw has a shoulder. So you cannot fit it through the, the bridge. So you have to remove the bridge if you, if, you, if you forget to put the screw. So yeah, after a couple of time, after a couple of mistakes, uh, you, you remember. So now, yeah, always remember to put the setting lever screw before putting the bridge. Okay, so the bridge is in place. I oiled all the points that need to be oiled. And now I'm putting uh, the, the wheel from the train of uh, wheels back in place. Okay, so that's uh, escape. The third wheel, they are so small, like I said, so it's even trickier to put them in place. Now I need to align them, all of them in their respective jewels. And the size of this movement, obviously, let's say it doesn't help. Yeah, it's it's easier when it's uh, on a on a bigger movement. Here we go. So now they are in place. I put the 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 bridge on the top, and I need to make sure that all the wheels are aligning, all the pivots are aligning in the jewels. So this I use a plastic uh, stick, you see, and a pair of tweezers just to move about like all the wheels until they fill them if they fall in their in their in their hole and when it is they will all connect and all move together so this you need to be really patient because you don't want to damage a, a pivot and you can see there when i turn they all turn together so it means they are all in the in the in their respective jewels so the train of wheel is connected all the wheels are connected to each other so as soon as it's done i Keep the pressure on the bridge and put one screw and now i put the second one and that's it nothing will move on uh, on the train of wheel okay so we can carry on we can carry on with the uh, with the crown wheel and the ratchet wheel so the crown wheel use same put a bit of grease on the points which are contact metal to metal and remember on these crown wheels when you have uh, a screw center screw is always reverse threaded so you you need to turn the opposite way compared to a standard thread okay so now i'm uh, assembling the quick spring so that's the spring actually that's a beautiful part you imagine that this part was machined from uh, a piece of of metal uh yeah it's it's amazing and you can see even the finish like you have some anglage on the parts it's uh, it's unbelievable the amount of forks that's required probably to to finish to to do a movement and to decorate this type of movement i don't know many hours was required before but yeah it's 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 uh, it's amazing okay so now i'm putting the ratchet wheel and we are done from the other side so we move to the dial side on the keyless works so further i'm going to put some grease on the winding pinion Put it in place. We go putting the clutch, greasing the the winding stem. So here I use some grease because yes, yeah, the contact metal to metal is uh, there is a bit more pressure if you want a bit more wear. 
So that's why you use some uh, heavier grease compared to the to the oils, which to the oil which is uh, less thick, if you want, than the grease. Okay, so now you can see with pair of tweezers, I'm holding the yolk spring and putting the yolk in place with another pair of tweezers to make sure everything is in place. So that sometimes it's a, a two-end operation, so it's, it's, it's a bit tricky but interesting. And when it's in place, I'm releasing, you see, the yolk spring gently to make sure everything is in place. Greasing again all the points which are in contact. Because there, that's uh, when you when you will pull on the on the crown to to change the hour. Yeah, that's some parts that will come in contact metal to metal and see a lot of pressure. So that's very important to to put grease there. Okay, putting back the cannon pinion and the rest of the wheels. There we go. It's in place. Perfect. The minute wheel. And the last piece, the setting lever uh, spring, so which is secured by two screws. So generally what I do is I put one screw, but not fully tight, the second one as well, arm the spring, and after fully, fully tight the screws, that's, uh, I found the best way to do it. Okay, so I think the, this side is done. There is only one thing left is, you can see there is one joules which is covered by this uh, little plate that I will clean with a bit of Rodico and put a, a drop of oil right in the center like we did for the balance uh, assembly and there just drop it in place so that's a jewel for the for the escape wheel okay it's in place and I will uh, oil all the other jewels under a microscope because they are so small and I didn't want to put like uh, too much oil in the in the jewels, so I did it under the microscope. Um, because yeah, you don't realize on a camera, but the scales of uh, everything which is on his movement is much smaller than usual. Okay, so put the pallet fork and the pallet fork cork just to make sure everything is aligned there. When it's working like that, it means it's good. Just securing everything with the screw. I putting a bit of a wine in the, in the movement. First test, yes, you can see it's working left, right, and the final results. Let's see if the balance and the movement will start. That's always the moment of truth. So see the balance will start. Put it in place gently, and oh, you see it went straight away. I just did a small movement. Oh, it stopped. It's not perfectly aligned there yet, but we saw it moving. So yeah, here we go. Just need to make sure it's laying down flat. When I put the screws, it will, the screw it will help as well to make sure it's uh, it's laying down flat. Because as actually any small angles will uh, prevent the, the balance from uh, from running. Okay, let's screw it in place, and we have a runner. Perfect. Okay, so let's uh, demagnetize the movement first and let's put it on a, on a time grapher. And you can see the result on a time grapher, I was not happy. Like uh, the amplitude is too low, the bit error is very high and the rate obviously is not adjusted, but already the amplitude and the bit error are too high. So I need to investigate a bit more and try to fix, uh, even if it's an old movement, uh, yeah, the, the, this result is to me is not acceptable. So you see the main spring is a T-shape at the end and the T-shape is coming in a groove like you see on the top there of uh, the basket. So uh, the, I order a new main spring and see if the main spring will add a bit more power because uh, maybe the, the old main spring was a bit tired and he lost some of his power. So maybe with a new main spring we'll be able to, to get uh, more amplitude in the watch. Okay, so you can see I'm putting gently the mainspring, but this is a T-shape. So the T-shape, like I said, you need to be aligned on the on this groove that you have on the on the barrel. I'm putting the arbor in the middle with uh, with the help of a vise. Now I'm releasing I'm releasing the arbor. There we go. You can see it's right in the middle, and obviously I oil and grease everything again, and uh, put the lid back on. 
Okay, you can see there on the top, you can see the grooves as where the, the T end of your main spring need to align. Okay, you see I did not disassemble the entire movement, I just disassembled the part that I needed to get access to the to the barrel assembly. So now I'm reassembling the the part that I removed. So I'm putting the bridge there, the bridge on the top, putting the screws back. And hopefully by putting a new mainspring, because I did not see anything anything else very wrong with this uh, movement. So by fitting a new mainspring, we will be able to increase the, the amplitude. And uh, the second point that I did not like it was uh, the bitter was around five degrees, I think. Uh, I like it to be around one or below one because on these movements, you will see the process later is not that easy to adjust the bit error. It's something that I'm still scared of doing because you can damage some of the parts I will show you uh, I will show you a bit later. Okay, so now I'm uh, putting the movement back, see if it's running. I will check the amplitude, but I will not show you the result. You will see the end result at the end when I put it on the time grapher, see, uh, see if we get something which is uh, acceptable or no, or a better result. So let's see. Yeah, you can see like the movement is not starting straight away, but as soon as I, I move it, uh, give it a bit of uh, an impulse and, uh, and it goes. Perfect. Okay, so now the next step, I, 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 uh, I like to leave the movement run for, for 24 hours, see if it's good. And um, now I'm going to try to correct the bit error. So for that, I have to remove the balance assembly. I have to remove the pallet fork, the pallet fork assembly as well. Here we go. Now I'm removing the, the pallet fork. I'm placing back the balance assembly without the pallet fork. And under the balance assembly, you have the what we call the impulse stone. That's the impulse stone is what makes the pallet fork rock left and right. And you want to have the the, the, the sorry the, the impulse stone aligned to a, a precise point. Okay, so that's what I'm checking now. Without the without the pallet fork, I can see if it's aligned too much to the left or too much to the right. So I saw that it was it was not aligned perfectly. That's why we had a, a bit error. So when the bit error is to zero, it means the 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 impulse stone is like right in the middle where it's supposed to be. So you see, to, to do the correction, you have to disassemble the balance assembly. And obviously, the balance assembly, you can see there, so it's not perfectly centered. But yeah, I had to remove. And this, uh, the hairspring is so small that I'm always afraid to, to damage it. So yeah, that's a process that I don't really like to do, especially on this small movement. Because you can see with, uh, like now I have to adjust this part in the center, which is very close to the hairspring. So I just turn it. Add a, a collet which is in the center, you need to turn it by a couple of degrees into the right direction, obviously. And this will help to, to allow the, the impulse stone to be aligned perfectly in the middle. So we we'll see if we manage to reduce uh, the bit error at the end uh, when we put it on a, on a time grapher. Okay, so let's focus on the case. I put it into the ultrasonic machine. It was quite clean, but I like to, to clean all the parts like the case uh, in a ultrasonic machine. So you can see there's a vibration doing its job. I just did a quick clean on the, on the dial as well, just polishing a bit the, our hand, just to give it a shine. Removing any uh, debris with a bit of uh, Rodico. Polishing the crystal, which is not in my shape, but there is some very tiny scratches on it. So um, I'm polishing with uh, a bit of polywatch. That's an uh, uh, easy method to polish uh, the glass. And okay, so now, now the movement is done. We're putting the our wheel. We finished to clean the dial. So we are going to put the dial back on the movement. Just, just need to make sure everything is aligned. Perfect. Just do a gentle press. There I'm always using like uh, carbon tweezers just to make sure I don't scratch anything. Now I, I screw the dial fit screws just to make sure the, the dial, as you can see, there's tiny screws underneath. The dial will be secured. And now I can fit the, the hand. So first the how hand. I did a, a gentle polish as well on the hand like I did on the dial. 
So I'm pressing them in place, you see, just gently pressing them in place with this, uh, with this tool. I'm just aligning it to midnight. And like that, I can put the minute hand. There we go. Same, I will align the minute hand to midnight. That's a trick to make sure your, your hand are, are aligned because you don't want when you are your how hand on the midnight, you don't want to have your minute hand on uh, 15 or 13. Yeah, you see, like when it's six o'clock, perfect, everything is aligned. So that's good. Let's check at, uh, at midnight what we, what we are getting. Yeah, perfect. Check as well that the hand are not touching each other, they're not touching the dial. So everything looks good. We can put the case back with the polish uh, crystal. The spacer, like the spacer, uh, like the, the movement in the, all the, uh, all the movement inside the case. Just to make sure, I need to align everything to put uh, the crown and the and the winding stem. There we go. Now I'm putting the the winding stem in place and the crown. Just push it. And the same on the other side, there is this uh, little clamp with a screw that to make sure the movement stay in place in the in the case. Okay, so last thing is so put the case back. That's a, a clamp on a case back. So you need to press it in, in place. So you can do it with your finger. It was uh, it was not that hard to put in place. And now let's see the result. Okay, so we can see first the amplitude went uh, up. Now we are around 270, so that's a pretty 280 almost. So that's pretty good amplitude. The rate is not amazing, but I think it's uh, good for this uh, for this type of watch. And you can see the bit error is just above one. I like to have it uh, under one, but yeah, I'm I don't want to risk it again damaging something. Okay, and here you can see the scale. Look at the scale compared to a, a normal watch, a 40 millimeter watch. It's it's amazing. And uh, yeah, that was a great project. So thanks for watching and uh, I see you next time. Bye bye.